This video is all about the least squares line of best fit method. And basically this method involves using formulas to draw the line of best fit. Now I need to point out that there are two versions of this video. This is the Sharp calculator version and I have another video which is the Casio calculator version. Now when people look at these formulas and these symbols down here they can become quite overwhelmed by it all. I recommend not focusing on this right now but just getting straight into the example and just trying to work our way through this slowly. So this example says the table and scatter plot below represent a sample of 15 people. Each person gave their age and recorded the amount of time they were on the internet in one week. So if we look at our table of values we can see that we've got our real young people, a 12 year old was on the internet for about 15 hours in a week whereas someone who's a bit older, 55 years old, was only on the internet for two hours per week. If we look at the scatter plot, we can see that the younger group are on the internet for longer, and as we progress to our older group, we have less internet usage. So we'll start with question A. It says use a calculator to find Pearson's correlation coefficient, correct to four decimal places. So we'll bring up our calculator and we're going to enter in these data values. First of all, we need to clear our calculator. So we'll go second function alpha, reset number one, then equals. And then we need to get into statistics mode. So mode stat is number one, line is number one, and we're in our statistics mode now. So when we enter in our values, we do one column at a time. So we'll enter in the 12 and the 15 by going 12, sto, 15, then M plus. We've now entered in one set of data values. Moving on to the next column, 15 and 21. So 15, sto, 21, M plus. We've now entered two sets of data values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and put in the rest of the data values. I want you to do this with me. All right, I've entered my set of data values and I can see that it says 15 here, which is good because I've got 15 sets of data values. To find the correlation coefficient is quite simple. We just want to put in the pronumeral R. So we're going to go alpha and the divide symbol and then equals. And we get a negative number this time, negative 0 0.8354. Negative 0 0.8354. And it helps to look at it and see if it makes sense when we look at the scatter plot. First of all, it's negative, and we can see that the scatter plot goes downhill, so that's a good sign. We can also see that it's 0.8 something, so it's reasonably strong maybe somewhat moderate, and when I look at my scatter plot here, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. So we'll now move on to question B, and this is our challenging one. We're finding the equation of the least squares line of best fit, which means that we have to refer to our formulas here, as well as all these symbols. If we look at our symbols, we've got R, which is Pearson's correlation coefficient. We've already calculated that. Sx, which is the standard deviation of x, Sy, the standard deviation of y, x with a bar above it, the mean of x, and y with a bar above it, the mean of y. So I'm going to show you how to find these. It's actually not that difficult as long as you keep the data entered into your calculator. So we'll go here. We need to find R, S of x, S of y, x with a bar above it, and y with a bar above it. And the beauty of this is that your calculator will find these values for you. We already had r from before. This was negative 0 0.8354. So we'll find the standard deviation of x. Now to be more specific, it's the sample standard deviation of x. And we can actually see it on the calculator. Here's sx, or the sample standard deviation of x. So I'm just going to go alpha 5 to find sx and it gives me 
we'll make that a 2. So 13.5882. And I want to do all of these to correct to four decimal places because eventually I'm going to substitute these values into some formulas. And I don't want to do much rounding until the very end. Some of you might be wondering, what is x and what is y? Well, if we look at our table above, the calculator makes the top row x and makes the bottom row y. So sx just means that we're finding the standard deviation of the top row. And sy is finding the standard deviation of the bottom row. So we'll bring up our calculator. We can see sy here. So we simply go alpha 8 to get SY, and to four decimal places is 5.6188. 5.6188. And now we need to find the mean of X or X bar. That just means the mean or the average of the top row. And it's on our calculator again. Here's X with a bar above it, alpha 4. We get 34.0667. 34.0667. And finally, y with a bar above it, which is the mean or average of the y row. That's going to be alpha 7, y with a bar above it. And we get 12, which is good. We don't have to do it to any number of decimal places. All right, we'll go back to our formulas here and we'll copy them across. And it's as simple as just substituting values into our formulas. We'll start with M. And M is the gradient. In fact, I'm going to need some room here. So if I want to find M or the gradient, I'm going to start off with R, which is negative 0.8354. And I'm going to multiply R by some sort of a fraction. And we're going to put SY at the top of the fraction. SY being 5.6188. And then we need to put SX at the bottom of the fraction, which is 13.588. 2. Alright, so bringing up our calculator, I'm going to enter this in. I'm going to use my negative button, negative 0 0.8354. I'm going to times it by a fraction of 5.6188. And I really don't like to use the fraction button, I prefer to use divide. So I'm going to do that. Divided by 13.5882. Equals, and I get a negative number, negative 0 0.3454. So M equals negative 0, forgotten already, 0.3454. Four. All right, so so far we've done that to four decimal places. Now we need to find C, C being the Y intercept. And once again, we're just using substitution. So the formula says that C equals Y with a bar above it, which is 12. And we want to subtract M. And M is the gradient or what we calculated here. So we've got to put negative 0 0.3454 in there. And I'm going to put it in brackets. Negative 0 0.3454. And the reason I'm putting it in brackets is so that we know that this is a negative here the one inside the brackets, and this is the subtraction symbol. So we know the difference between them. And then we multiply M by X bar. All right, so we're going to times this by X bar, which is 34.0667. So we've just substituted values in, and we're now going to work it out. So it starts by saying 12 minus, so 12 minus or subtract and then we've got a negative number and I'm just going to use the negative key negative 
0 0.3454 and then I'm going to multiply it and go times. You'll notice that the calculator automatically puts the brackets around it for you. So it looks exactly the same here as what we wrote down here. And we've got to times this by 34.0667 equals and it comes out to 23 point and we'll go 77. 23.77 correct to two decimal places. We're at the point now where we're coming up with our solutions to the formulas. So we can start rounding to a fewer number of decimal places. In fact, uh, let's round m to a fewer number of decimal places. Let's make m equal negative 0.35, correct to two decimal places. I needed to do it to four decimal places first just because I was using m in, inside the formula below that. All right, what do we do now? Well, you might remember from an earlier topic on linear functions, we had the gradient intercept formula, which was y equals mx plus c. Uh, sometimes I teach it as y equals mx plus b. It doesn't really matter which letter you use, whether it's b or c. And in this particular case, we're using c for the y-intercept. Now we need to do is substitute values here. We know what m is. m is negative 0.35. So we're going to go y equals negative 0.35, then x. And then we're going to add c, which is 23.77 plus 23.77. And we now have an equation for our line of best fit. In fact, I'm going to change this equation a little bit because I would rather not have it in terms of y and x. Our age is x, but I'd rather my age was capital A. And I'd rather make y h to represent the number of hours per week that these people used internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation that I've made, and I'm just going to replace y with h. And I'm going to replace x with a for my h. And I'm just going to copy across the numbers from above. It's the exact same equation. I've just changed the pronumerals. Anyway, we're going to use this equation that I've made for our next part of the question, question C. And we're going to draw the least squares line of best fit on the scatter plot at right. Okay, so to do this, we just need two points, and the further apart the points, the better. So I'm going to do one point for a 10 year old and a point for a 60 year old. So I'm going to draw up a table of values with those two points, the 10 and the 60. And I'm not going to show all the working, I don't really need to. I'm just going to plug them right into the calculator. So I'll start with negative 0.35, so negative 0.35. And I'm going to multiply this by a, which in this case is 10. And then I'm going to add 23.77. This gives me 20.27. And whenever you're putting something on a scatter plot, you really don't need decimals because we're not going to be that accurate. So I'm just going to write it as 20. All right, the next one is when our age is 60. So we'll start again negative 0.35 times our age of 60 plus 23.77 and we get 2.77 so I'll round that to 3 hours of internet usage and now I'm going to plot these two points so a 10 year old we put at 20 hours and a 60 year old we put at Three hours. Once we've got our two points, we're going to join them with a straight line. Now that we've drawn our least squares line of best fit, you can see that it that it works quite well. It, it looks like a decent line of best fit that we have drawn here. So I'm going to end it by putting arrows at each end, and we'll now move on to question D. Question D says, use the equation to predict the internet usage of someone aged 5. 
Okay, so our scatter plot only goes to 10 years old, so we're actually going beyond the 10 out, out here somewhere. You can see it's probably going to be something slightly above 20 hours of usage. So we'll we'll just substitute that in. So that means our A, our age, becomes 5, and the rest of the numbers stay the same, and we're just going to type this into our calculator. So negative 0 0.35 times 5 plus 23.77 equals, and we get around 22 hours of internet usage. I want to point out that this is actually an example of extrapolation. Because when we look at our line of best fit, it only goes between 10 and 60. We're actually going beyond that. We're having to extend the line to find the hours of internet usage for a five-year-old. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two using the Sharp calculator. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.